I'm thinking tonight about growing, about growing in life, about growing in relationship to our God and, and getting to know him and how we treat him, how we think about him. Do we think of about him as a series of doctrines or as someone or something to extract stuff from benefits uh, what's another word for benefits stuff I guess I'm repeating myself but what do we think about him as as an individual as a person as a friend as a father as a brother he calls himself or refers to himself as all those things in the bible that one true god he shows himself to us in that way and yet not told the truth we are lied to a great extent now, just let me set this groundwork i'm speaking to you who are in religion in church in your denomination faithful and really trying you're really trying you really want to make it work and you believe you believe because you had certain experiences, you've come to understand certain things and you're pursuing it and you're doing the best you can. But yeah, there's something gnawing at you. You just, you're like, there's something missing. I know it's out there. If I just keep pursuing it, it's gonna happen. And I just wanna suggest to you that it's normal to always be maturing, that's awesome. You know, so I see someone who's immature, and I say, I say hey, that's great because you got a lot to learn. I got a lot to learn. We all do. It's just that uh, before you know anything, know that, that life is about maturing. It's just that that one group, which I think is a massive group. I speculate that it's probably in the millions in the church system, whether consciously or under the surface, we are aware of this common trait that we share in the Christian world anyway, and I believe all religious worlds are all humans have this same thing we share, which is there's this emptiness, there's this void, which is that religious people believe they're on the way to getting it, whether it's on the other side in heaven, or if they just keep doing their penances and their obediences and their labors and their works, they're going to get it, or they might convince themselves they've already got it. But if you're honest enough, to admit that something isn't happening. I'm getting less and less. I'm giving, I'm trying, and my returns are less and less. And uh, like I say, you need to be past that stage where you can look around you and see and hear enough amens and backslaps. Uh, and that's enough to, to convince you that that is no longer enough to convince you that what you're doing is what it's all about. That there is this individual, this God, who is not a thing, a doctrine, a uh, person to extract benefits from, but that he actually is an individual. And he's living a life that that is about going forward, about growing, about getting to know. And he offers things. And those things are very fulfilling. They're beyond anything I've ever seen or really even heard about in church systems, whether it's through the church itself, denominations, books. It's so rare. It makes me understand what he was talking about in Matthew when he said, broad is the way that leads to destruction and many there be that find it and straight is the gate narrow is the way that leads to life as an eternal life and few there be that find it. I, I find that so few people that want it and that's the thing, is what do you want? Do we want something from God that he's offering? Or do we want something he's not offering? Do In other words, do we want him? I believe he's offering himself, just like a friend would offer you themselves. Your parents offered you themselves. You know, they, in many ways they gave themselves for you. Of course, he's a perfect parent. He's a perfect father. He gave himself to you perfectly. But in good relationships that are edifying, that not just make you feel good, but are actually consist of something that's substantive about giving each other of one another. It's not about what is commonly found in church systems. 
I think you'll agree if you think about this, we don't treat him very nicely. We don't treat him as an individual to have a relationship with. We treat him as one of those things, one of those doctrines, one of those assets we can extract stuff and benefits from comforts. Uh, sometimes even the things we want is for something substantive, but in our life, with our family, with our relationships, God, lead me to a good spouse. God, uh, teach me a good, be a good parent or whatever. But he has something he's offering that's his relationship, his self, his friendship, his fatherhood, his love for you. And I just wanted to talk about that as far as do you really think about that? Because I think we're all, to some in some respects, we're all maturing, we're all growing, no matter what it looks like. Some people can be totally stagnant, but I believe he's drawing all of us. It's just that unfortunately we can shut him out through our behavior. We can choose not to listen to that anymore. It can get too uncomfortable. It can get real uncomfortable. When what you want is something he's not offering and he keeps offering it to you and you, you come into contact with someone who does have it and they try to share it with you, you may not want it. So again, I go back to what, who I'm talking to and there's probably not a lot of you, I have to admit, that really want what God has to offer. God has himself to offer. And that's where life begins. That's where that maturing begins. That's where it really is good. And you can see no matter where you are, if you see yourself as a complete and utter baby, an infant, which is how I see myself now, after 10 years of religion, my wife, both of us, uh, she's in religion for 35 years. We both see ourselves combined, 45 years of religion, we see as, ourselves as infants in Christ. And it's wonderful. It's absolutely amazing. She's nodding her head in agreement right now, my cameraman. Because it's incredible. It's wonderful to be a baby. That's not the point. The point is, I'm growing. I'm getting to know him. I am exactly, we are exactly where we are supposed to be. Because we are finally beginning to receive the love. We are finally beginning to receive what it is he has to offer. We really did try with all our hearts. And we believe a lot of people are trying with all their hearts to find him and to be in sync with him, so to speak. It's just that you're not taught that in the church system. We weren't taught that, but we believed we were hearing truth. So what are you going to do? These people are teaching the truth. So I need to do what they're teaching me. They are taught. They are anointed. They are blessed. They have the Holy Ghost. They have the Holy Spirit, all these different terms. And we just accept it out of faith because, you know, you do the best you can with the information you have. The point is, we came about at a point in our maturity where we find out that's not so true. That's not so true. Just because they're the people wearing the right uniform with the right credentials doesn't mean everything they say is true. I see it more clearly now as far as education, the government, and all these systems that are designed. And they're, they're, it's not some big interwoven conspiracy. It's just a motivation. People want to have what they want to have, which is the thing they value the most and in church systems what they value the most is their lifestyle is their ability to have the things they want the way they want to have them by getting them for themselves Do you hear me mention god in any of that because they don't want god they don't want god they would accept god if god came to them on their terms, on bended knee, so to speak. But the point is, is they want what they want on their terms. So I, I say all that to explain that, you know, you might say, well, Mark, you're, you're trying to give me this big conspiracy. They're just all lying to me. No, it's an intuitive thing. They all have a vested interest for this one thing that they all want. That's why I never felt like I fit in. or Both of us didn't. But there was always something wrong. We pursued sincerely and we took what we... The input they gave us.